Hey, I'm I'm regular Ben. I did a video a couple of months back of me playing some music on Ableton using a Xbox 360 controller. The one I use in the video is uh, just another generic. This is a uh, Rock Candy, so it just has to be a wired uh, Xbox 360 controller, USB. It can be wireless if you have that dongle to use on your PC. All right, so you've got your Xbox. 360 controller and some USB ports just plug them into anything. So, uh, boom, it's plugged in. And uh, if you're connected to the internet on Windows 7 or Windows 8, it should automatically download and install the drivers. Okay, so what you'll need next is a virtual MIDI driver. It's it's sort of like a a physical MIDI cable. It's virtual, um, and it and it connects two devices together. Uh, it, it's basically a virtual MIDI patch cable. If you've ever used MIDI physically before, it does exactly the same thing. So a great one to use is called Loop B. L O O P B E. Just Google that. Uh, I'll bring you to this first link. Loop B1 is free, and that's just one MIDI cable, so that's just one MIDI device at a time. Um, the other one that you can purchase is Loop B30, which is 30 different cables, um, 30 different devices, or 30 different connections, which is also pretty cool. So just go down to the Downloads page, select uh, Download, Let's find the correct one first. Ah, here, down at the bottom of the page. So, Loop B1. I don't think it matters which architecture you have, whether it's 32 or 64 bit. I always suggest running this in uh, administrator. So click next. Blah, blah. I've read that multiple times. So. Okay, we're installing now. This window security thing might pop up if you're on 8 or 7. Um, always trust from, yeah, it's a good device, um, so it's installing, I don't care to see the manual, so finish. Now hopefully that's correct, we're going to run Ableton 9 to see if that installed correctly or not. So, so here's Ableton 9, let's go to options and then preferences. So it looks like it did. Uh, Input, loopy internal MIDI. So you want to get the track. Um, I don't believe it matters whether you have the sync in your remote. Output doesn't matter. You don't want to create a loop either. So for now, that can stay on. You can minimize this. Um, okay, so now that we have GlovePy downloaded, we have loopy installed as our virtual MIDI cable. Um, let's just make sure that we have Ableton Live set up uh, to pick up signals from that MIDI device. So open up Ableton, go to Options, Preferences, and then where you see Loop B, make sure you have Track On, Sync, and Remote do not matter for this. Uh, let's just pull up a random instrument. I have Suite, so let's do Piano. Something basic. That's playing off of my um, my computer keyboard. So that's just testing to see if it sounds. It sounds like a Rhodes piano or some sort of bell. So let's minimize that. Um, you can open up Glove Pie. 
bring it to the right screen. Um, let's go to the GUI again. Let's choose manually. So here for output device, you're going to have different different devices to choose from. See where you uh, find loop B. For me, that's MIDI 2. If you have multiple MIDI devices, it might be something different. You can have default channels selected. Um, I think anything would work really on here. I'll just go with one because that's default for just about everything. Um, one thing you will want to make note is which number MIDI this is. So mine is MIDI 2. Yours could be 3 or 4 or 5. could even be number 1. Who knows? Um, because sometimes it doesn't automatically carry that number over when you're doing it. So, let's just choose octave 0 through 4. I like this, this specific A because it's an A button on the controller. Uh, just no reason. Uh, detect input is the quickest and fastest way to, quickest and easiest way. So just hit A and it will automatically bring up everything that you need. You don't have to change any of the variables. Uh, and then you click apply. So you can go back to your untitled tab and see here the the problem with just doing it straight like this um, and then running it, you can hit A and it'll play the note through the Windows uh, Wave Synth, which is a default MIDI device on most computers. Um, so stop that. Right after where it says MIDI, you type in that number for your device, minus number two. So now if I run it, it should send a signal through loop B and then to it. Yeah. So you can't really hear that, it's not very loud. Right now that's running into Ableton. See if I can boost this signal or something. So yeah. That's what we're getting for the A by. Um, you can make very complicated scripts where you'll have variables for analog, analog. You can uh, hold down multiple different buttons for different uh, notes or different CC control units. Um, let's bring that up again. Uh, what, I, what I did in the video was I, I created a drum rack. So let's get rid of this piano. Uh, let's go instruments, get rid of that. Just a basic drum rack. So here we have these C1 through whatever. I think this is the default, so whenever you put in a blank drum rack, you can get stuff like this. You can go to samples too. So let's do kick, your kick drum. I think that sounds pretty basic. So that's going to be C1. Let's do um, snare. I don't think that's what I want. So, uh, snare for C sharp. Let's move that to D, because um, I'll just keep everything. And so this is on my keyboard right now. Terrible sounding snare. That bass kick actually sounds pretty decent. Um, let's go back to our glove pie script. So here we can, I'll, I'll just show you how to type this yourself. Copy and paste will definitely be your friend here. So. Um, this one, yeah, okay, A was fine for that, so let's make A our kick. This, uh, the kick was uh, note C1, and our snare was D1. So let's do D1 for this. Let's change the input, this X input, input, I'm sorry, is uh, where you can type in which button you want, uh, different things. It can get pretty complicated, but at the same time, it's very simple to follow along with. Let's run. Let's go back to Ableton. Okay, see? There. Um, you can trigger samples from a drum rack by doing this. Uh, that's very, very basic compared to what I was doing in the video. The video um, was just a few samples I found in sample packs online. Um, so copy and then paste this guy into Loopy. One thing that I didn't mention though is before you get into scripting you can change what your default MIDI is referred to in here. So 
I'm guessing that's why I'd done earlier. Uh, where was that little piece? Here, so device mini 30. Mini device mini. Number 30. So just paste that there. Mine was number 2, because I only had 2 on there. Um, it looks like everything should be about correct on here. Let's run this. Let's go back to Ableton and see what shows up on the controller. So this is triggering the octave higher than what I just had it set to. So we, let's see if it can uh, find some more stuff. Alright, so on the computer I preloaded just a couple of samples. Um, and, and I'm using the old script I used in the past video. Uh, so these are mapped out to just different various kicks. So these four buttons right here. Uh, and directional pads also notes. So these two uh, four buttons, these this four buttons and these uh, this they call it a top or a POV um, directional pad. It's also four buttons. So you have your <laughs> clap. Symbol, symbol, symbol. Um, it's weird, I didn't even put a snare on there. How crude. Anyways, um, if you hold down the, the left bumper button here and move around the analog sticks, that's a MIDI variable, so it works just like a uh, MIDI trackpad would. Whenever you let go of the stick, it resets to zero, so it's very good with LFOs, frequencies, and distortion effects. So you can set different ones for each one. Um, and if you're familiar with mapping, you do the same thing as if you're mapping with every key. So there's the gist of it using a controller, um, using a regular gaming controller for a uh, mini controller. Um, uh, something that kind of gave me this idea was the Guitar Hero controller. Uh, there's a couple of bands who are doing it on, on stage live, like using a, a actual Guitar Hero controller. Uh, David Crowder Band and Hawk Nelson, um, they both toured and played on stage with the Guitar Hero controller, which is very interesting. Um, and they kind of gave me the idea that maybe any video game controller can be used as a MIDI controller. Um, and they used, they used different methods to do it, but I've just found out that this one's probably the easiest um, for myself and for many others. Um, and they're using the same program, Ableton, though. So, uh, it's very easy to trigger sounds, samples, and all that stuff on Ableton. Um, and GlovePie is very easy with uh, different purposes, not just music-wise. You can use it for mapping controllers to keyboards, uh, mice. Uh, one of the best things uh, that you can do with it is map Wii Remote, Wii Remote um, and collect different motion variables, so you can get your yaw, pitch, all that fun stuff. You can also, if you have a Wii Motion Plus, you can also use the compass. I think that's about it for this video. So, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment and message me. Um, if you like this video, like or subscribe, maybe both.